maximum frustration as people are really getting affected by this negative sentiment that we're right now. Of course, prices are down bad, but now is the time to be present, to be there, to do the hard work, the tough work, put up the sleeves, dig deep, and just position yourself for what's going to be an inevitable bull run, maybe later this year, latest, early next year, in my personal opinion. We have so much to cover. Cosmos as a brand right now is also going through a lot of attacks right now. There's a lot of people that are complaining about the price performance and those kind of things. And I feel like currently we are undergoing a reallocation in which the impatient are giving their backs to the patient. And that's just how it is. That's just how it always has been. Are we doomed? Like some random Twitter accounts are claiming that this is the end now. Cosmos is dead. Crypto is dead. We're going to enter a multi-year bear market. Or... Are there actually a lot of exciting developments that are now coming all together slowly one by one? This is exactly what we're going to be talking about today. And after watching this video for the next 20, 25 minutes, you're going to have the full picture of the current state of the Cosmos ecosystem. And if you're saying, yo, Sito, I really love you, but I can't see your face anymore. I can't hear your voice anymore. I need to read this stuff. I need to be able to just read this stuff. You can go on Stake Sito, the Stake Sito website, and you will be able to find articles here, articles about each project, ecosystem updates, about Celestia. I'm sometimes reading this stuff, and this is from Winnie. Our re research and content team at CryptoCito and StakeCito, they are absolutely top-notch. We're sharing updates here about each of these projects. You're saying, yo, Cito, what, what is currently going on on Celestia? What are the latest updates? Go on our website, you'll see. You'll see because we keep you posted there on our website, on our Twitter, on all these places. We have a quick video here also from Search. Um, new projects that I haven't even heard about like Revity Chain, Hennes Finance, Plume Network. There's a lot of things going on in each of these ecosystems and we're going really deep on each of them on the Cito zone, but also here on Stake Cito. Also, don't forget to get your ticket for Cosmos. We're on in less than three months, 77 days to be precise. And a big innovation this year is going to be the segmentation of Cosmos into tracks. Tracks basically provide you a custom experience of the conference because you might be one of those people that is just interested in modularity, right? You just want to talk to Celestia, Dimension, some of these modularity projects, movement, and so on and so forth. And you might not be as excited about restaking, for example, right? Or liquid staking. So you will get a custom event agenda and you will be able to listen to all the talks on the main stage at the Hacker Lounge. There will be a dedicated exhibition space for each of these tracks, each of these verticals. Um, if you're about privacy and ZK, you, there's going to be a track for you. If you're about gaming and NFTs, there's going to be a track for you. Some of these are more consumer facing. Some of these are more on the infrastructure side of things. But this is the big innovation for customers this year. And I think it's going to 10x our productivity and efficiency and the outcome of this year's conference, right? And if you think back historically, Cosmos has always been a place, a platform where developers unite. This has always been our mission from day one to basically get the smartest brains in Cosmos and beyond in one room, lock the doors for three days and let them talk, right? And a lot of great things have come out of this, um, like Interprotocol, IST Stable Token came out of it, a lot of projects, a lot of investments. A lot of ideas, like basically taking Gravity Dex off the hub in 2021. Lisbon was one decision. Building mesh security, they built a prototype in Medellin 2022. Cosmos overall is an extremely productive conference where a lot of products are coming out, a lot of fresh new ideas, and it also helps to realign the builder ecosystem in Cosmos, right? Which is why I believe so much that Cosmos is an important element, and this year is no different. And this year, what we're also going to be doing is to basically have the new kits, the new Cosmos generation in the spotlight, right? The Babylon's native is a brand new protocol, also in the Bitcoin space that's going to launch. Akash Network, they've been around for long, but they're just one of the flagship Cosmos chains there are. Um, David Sill from Babylon is going to be there. JP from Mantra, they're also leading the tokenization and RWA track. Coin Bureau also, we're good friends with them now. Nick is going to be there. Guy is going to be there. It's going to be very, very fun and just a different level of conference experience. So and by then, Dubai is also going to be a lot cooler, a lot fresher right now it's extremely hot and humid but by then i think you can also maybe connect it with a small vacation with your friends and family or with your teams right that's also what a lot of these teams have been doing over the years is just connect customers to an offsite with their company anyways we have a lot to cover a lot to share in this video starting with macro currently it does not look good 2.9 trillion dollars have been wiped out from stocks this morning due to fears of a global recession with ongoing geopolitical concerns we have ongoing wars we have no rate cuts, at least until September. We have a lot of inflation all over the world. We have this ugly election in Venezuela, unfortunately. And Venezuela is one of the countries that's very close to me because I've been living in Colombia for a long time. And Colombia and Venezuela are like brothers, are like sisters, they're neighbors. And to see what's going on there, 10 million Venezuelans have fled Venezuela over the past six, seven, eight years. 
And this election has just been absolute fraud. And it's insane that, um, yeah, this this is uh, going on there. So oh, Lebanon as well, a lot of inflation, a lot of uncertainties in many countries all over the world, the ongoing Russia, Ukraine situation, Israel, Palestina. We are in the midst of a global um, of a global geopolitical uncertainty and crisis, basically. And the stock market has now collapsed, basically. There was a huge crash. Crypto has also collapsed yet again. Not a really kind of double-digit crash, but more so another step down, right? And it feels to me like March 2020, yet again, this is the worst day also since the COVID crash in 2020 on the stock market. But when it comes to crypto, this is just another step Right, where you're like grasping for air, you want relief, you want crypto, you want altcoins, especially to go up to recover, but they're not recovering, they're not going up. And this is really the time where people are giving up. We are at max frustration, I said in the opening, but also max capitulation. People are capitulating, they're exiting now, they're giving into their emotions, they go on Twitter, they're ranting, they're blaming others, they're really, really angry, and they're sharing that anger, right, with their Twitter community. And that is dangerous, obviously, because it also creates more friction. It creates more hate. It's very toxic. Um, but it's also okay because these people have to let their emotions out, right? They need a face to blame, right? And in Cosmos, I understand my situation here also as a content creator, as a YouTuber that's also wearing many hats with customers, with sexy, though people just assume that everything is like falling to me and they see my huge success and they're like, oh, we have to like talk him down. And the truth is for me, it's also not easy, right? I'm in the same boat. I'm also suffering with these prices. I'm all in on crypto. Um, my portfolio is bleeding. I actually haven't looked at my portfolio in like eight weeks because I don't want to see it, right? It's terrible, right? But the truth is also that we have to learn to get through these adversities and we have to understand at the same time that crypto itself is a huge experiment, highly, highly volatile. Um, we're just one hack away from all of this going to zero, right? Which we've seen with Terra. And I talked about this a lot two years ago, which we're seeing now with Kujira. Um, the foundation treasury got liquidated, um, at least part of it, right? But multiple millions got liquidated, which is nuts, right? On their own product, on their own chain. So a lot of crazy things are happening all the time. And I've been preaching for many years to you guys to number one, never go all in on crypto. Number two, don't ever listen to one single source of information, whether that's a YouTuber like me, whether that's Coin Bureau, whether that's Crypto Banter, whether that's anyone out there, whether it's on Twitter, right? Don't ever follow one single source. Build up multiple sources of information on different platforms from different people, even maybe contradicting people, right? But it's so important. And yeah, we are in this phase now. It is what it is. But I think there are so many signs and so many things that indicate that this is temporary, right? We're not going to die. We're not going to zero. Cosmos is not going to die. Cosmos is not going to zero. Atom is not going to zero. None of this shit is going to zero, right? We are not going to zero. And surely there will be coins that will be underperforming, coins where the core teams or contributors are exiting, they're demotivated, they're leaving the industry, they're giving into their emotions, they don't have a vision anymore, there's no clear roadmap, there's no liquidity, there's no in inbound of new users, not none of that, right? There's no talk about the chain, there's no, no one invested in, not just financially, but also emotionally. That is very dangerous, but if you watch this video in full length, you will understand that Cosmos as an ecosystem, the interchain, is far from dead. And it's just ridiculous how, you know, people are calling death upon Cosmos while there's actually an all-time half development, new chains, multi-billion chains that are live right now, um, or chains that are launching and are in the pipeline. Ren made this tweet here about the Japanese yen and the USD, which is another thing that's kind of pushing everything down which is basically that for 30 years, Japan had 0% interest rate on the currency. And as a result of that, investors borrowed yen, the Japanese yen at no cost, and invested it globally outside of Japan as well. They invested into T-bills abroad and a basket of risk assets, including the NASDAQ. And now for the first time in many years, the Bank of Japan increased the interest rates uh, this week by 0.25%, uh, which is almost unprecedented. And as a result of increased interest rates, this is a signal to the market that investors are not concerned that the money they borrowed for free is no longer free and they're unwinding their trades. And this whole um, this whole trade is worth over $4 trillion. So that is kind of right, the panic between the Japanese yen, the USD, and also risk on assets like crypto that are immediately suffering from this because if this liquidity gets sucked out of the market, that could mean or indicate that risk on assets like crypto might suffer and really bleed further, right? And we've seen this as a result. We're not sure if that's a result of because of this alone or just the ongoing macro situation, geopolitics, but that's definitely one of the reasons, right? At the same time, we're seeing a, a, an entire reset of um, the uh, long positions, right? A lot of people are getting liquidated left and right, hundreds of millions in liquidations. And this is from August 1st. We've been going down from there even further, 5 6%. Bitcoin crashed below 60K yesterday. So massive liquidations, geopolitical issues, the Japanese yen saga, it's all happening. At the same time, we're seeing presidential candidates and basically Congress people, senators, 
they're talking about crypto and they're also talking about a strategic reserve, which they haven't talked about ever before. But this post from Santiago is like, basically, guys, we're on a whole new level now. Crypto is on the political stage, on the global stage. Nation states are accumulating Bitcoin like El Salvador and many others probably silently in the background right now. Crypto is not going anywhere. And they want this scenario. Like they love this scenario right now where people are max frustrated, max fearful, max panicking. And that's where mistakes happening. That's where people get washed out while they are filling their bags in the background. So don't get fooled by this contradicting thing that is going on right now. It's just over and over and over the same thing. I've been in this now for seven years, full time, fully invested in crypto since 2018. Every cent I made from e-commerce, I put into crypto for two and a half years, pretty much three years, 2018, 19, and 20. 2017, I invested, I lost it all. But 2018, 19, 20, I put every single cent I made from e-commerce into crypto and it's paid off really, really nicely in 2021, um, which then allowed me to try out stuff like customers and those kind of things. But it is crazy that people are getting fooled by this same strategy that we've been seeing over and over again, right? With mainstream media, politics, they say one thing, they do the other thing. And it's just crazy to see that, yeah, people are getting getting shaken out by that. At the same time, we also have this crazy statement from Donald Trump. He talked about crypto and Bitcoin at the national conference recently. I covered it in the last video, but he just dropped another bomb and that is a big one. Who knows, maybe we'll pay off our $35 trillion, hand him a little crypto check, right? We'll hand him a little Bitcoin and wipe out our $35 trillion. But, how do you but also caution, the same thing applies here, right? These promises from these politicians, especially pre-election, Basically, they say that to get votes, right? What they're actually going to do later is a different topic. But we're seeing now already that the Democrats are, that the current administration is also executing some of these things, basically trying to front run Trump and to also show the, the market and the voters like, yeah, we're not, we're, we're not going to keep up this cracking down on Bitcoin and crypto um, philosophy anymore and strategy. We're actually also kind of forced to embrace it, especially because Trump is pressuring them. Looking into the ETF flows, we see... $237 million in outflows yesterday, big outflows from Fidelity, but outflows everywhere else as well, except for BlackRock and Grayscale. They have seen slight inflows, but it's the first red day, actual red day in a couple of weeks. We had small red days uh, recently, but yesterday has been a bigger red day with quarter billion in outflows. Um, so yeah, that's on the, uh, the Bitcoin ETF. If we look at the Ethereum ETF, we see another red day as well, 54 million, um, 61 million outflows from Grayscale could not be absorbed by all any of the other um of the other ETF providers, and that is causing more and more sell pressure. We have now seen $2 billion in outflows from Grayscale. They have now slightly less than $6 billion left, which most of that is probably going to be sell sold off. Um, and um, that's because this ETH -E fund was basically converted from the previous trust fund, which basically was a one-way street. So previously, Grayscale had this product where investors could invest into ETH, uh, through Grayscale at a discount, basically at a big uh, 20, 30, 40% discount at the bear market. So they bought a lot of these ETH for like a couple hundred dollars, probably eight, seven, eight hundred dollars. But now that this fund got converted into an ETF, which at the beginning when it launched was around $9 billion, this is getting sold off aggressively, right? And this was expected. We also talked about this uh, weeks before, also about Bitcoin. We had the same thing there. Um, but I think for Ethereum being a less liquid, smaller market cap asset, this is going to have a bigger impact. So 2 billion already got sold off and this has not been absorbed by the market yet. So the total flows have been negative 500 million, um, but we're still seeing volumes in the hundreds of millions per day. And I think once they're running out of powder, which eventually they will, right? Then I think this is um, setting the, the level field. And then I think from there, we're going to see a reversal. There's going to be more demand. BlackRock will keep promoting that. They will keep getting investors in and all these kind of things. And then you'll see the Ethereum price rise. And when Ethereum goes up, all the other altcoins will follow. Now, looking into Cosmos specifically, we see everything down as well, four, five, six, seven percent The top gainer here, Iris, Ryzen, Territory, Saga also up 1%. But overall, nothing much is happening. The biggest losers, Dimension, Injective also below $20 again. Um, but yeah, I mean, $20 was their 2021 all-time high um, back then, right? So yeah, some of these are still at higher levels. Uh, Say Network, $0.26 cents was at around eight or nine cents when it launched, something like that. Um, fetch below a dollar, which is wild, um, but still indicates a $2.5 billion market cap. So yeah, um, we are down bad, but um, I think overall the, under the underlying developments are still bullish. And yeah, in that context of 
kind of, you know, the Cosmos brand, the future, we talked about it so much over the years, right? Cosmos is not one single coin, one single chain. There's no base layer alignment, which means it's an ecosystem of sovereign layer one blockchains. I think people still don't really fully understand that. They still think Cosmos equals Atom. And if Atom goes down, it means Cosmos is not doing well, which is totally untrue. But people still believe that. Unfortunately, I've been doing my best here on CryptoCito with CitoZone, SexCito, Cosmos to educate people about that. And many people understand that, of course. But I'm saying... Maybe a loud minority on Twitter, they don't understand that. And are like, Atom down, Cosmos bad. Anyways, Saki has some points here. I think some of them make sense. There's probably a much longer list. Demand for sovereign layer ones continue. And that is very, very true, which is why chains like Bear Chain, Babylon Chain, Celestia, Saga, Say Network, Tor Chain, Kronos, they all chose the Cosmos stack to build on their sovereign layer one blockchain. And this will continue to grow, right? DYDX has basically provided a blueprint for... Ethereum L2 is to basically migrate and build their own sovereign Cosmos L1. DYDX is a big successory for the Cosmos ecosystem. And if you watch my recent interview with Charles here in person, Shisha Sito in Dubai, then you know that um, they're very happy with that decision, right? Because there's also a lot of drama between all the Ethereum L2s and all that stuff, right? And L3s, L4s, L5s, where, wherever this is going. But demand will grow. We know that. We have proof for that. We know Setlos, which is basically PUBG, um, a huge game that is also building a Cosmos L1. Um, so it's all coming. The L2 premium erodes flexibility and independence of building on L1. IBC reaches everywhere and powers intents and chain abstraction in more places. Also fully agree, I think the market is now slowly accepting IBC as the interoperability standard. Uh, we're seeing integrations through Picasso network, bringing it to Solana and Ethereum. Um, and also I saw a lot of comments asking about Picasso. I think we can do a, probably like a, a little bit of a deeper dive um, with updates and everything in, in one of the next videos, if that's what you want to hear. Um, but yeah, Picasso bringing IBC everywhere, integrations also through FMOS on Ripple and the XRP ecosystem, Koreum also doing the same. Um, it's just going out there everywhere, right? Landslide for Avalanche. And um, eventually, I think this will also get implemented on the native layer. We also heard an announcement from Cardano. That is, the Cardano Foundation is building a sidechain on Cardano that is fully IBC compatible. So it's all coming together. Namada is building, uh, is built on Cosmos, implements IBC, Penumbra as well, uh, Agoric for chain abstraction, right? Uh, it's all coming together. AVS is continuing to use large amounts of Cosmos tech, which is currently the state as well. So if you look at it, Eigenlayer AVSs are all also kind of built on, on Cosmos. Celestia, the best modular builder community. And I agree. Um, if you watch my interviews with Nick um, and all my Celestia content over the years, they are made in Cosmos. Um, they're never really publicly bragging about it too much, but they also don't have to. Um, but they pioneered modularity as a concept, um, which I also always tell you guys, if you look at each vertical, right, whether it's modularity, restaking, Bitcoin, EVM, most of the top contenders in those verticals are Cosmos chains, right? So that's just what it is. Anyways, there are a lot of more things that need to be added here, obviously. Um, also kind of, you know, why is that Why is that matter for the crypto user, for the end user? But yeah, the current price performance obviously doesn't support that. But also if you look at other ecosystems and other coins, they're also down bad. So everything is down. Anyways, David also coming out. And I think David, honestly, is one of the new main characters for Cosmos, one of the main faces for Cosmos. Um, Babylon, the founder, we did an interview years ago, um, and also a recent one here, uh, six months, four or five, six months ago, something like that. But he's saying Cosmos together with Bitcoin can come back even stronger. Nick White from Celestia, Cosmos is like Bitcoin. Every time they'll kill it, it only comes back stronger. Like you have these people, these like big influential founders, co-founders, um, C-suite executives, that are saying this stuff um, from other projects that don't seem to be fully Cosmos aligned, but they actually are. And I know for a fact, I mean, I've been doing Cosmos. What's going on behind the scenes in Cosmos with the whole planning, with everything behind it, right? With what's happening in the workshop rooms, in the hacker lounge, in all these different rooms that we had over the years. I know for a fact that there is alignment, that there are, there is a lot of mutual respect. And just because they're not tweeting about it doesn't mean that they don't synergize, right? I think also want to make this very, very clear. and. I understand I, I probably have different information available because I'm very, very close to many of these teams just through CryptoCito, but also StakeCito and, and Cosmoverse. So I see what's going on behind the scenes. I talk to them off camera. Obviously, I also get a lot of insights there just by talking to them, networking and those kind of things. And I know for a fact that there's a lot of alignment. Anyways, we also see more advancements for Kepler. EVM support is now live on Kepler. I think that's also one of the things um, that Zaki didn't fully mention. I mean, he, he said chain abstraction, but I think what, really, what this really means is like, we need a lot more intuitive interfaces for Cosmos and the interchain, right? The UX and interface of Cosmos needs to be as simple 
as just using a random application, right? And right now it isn't, right? Right now people are getting lost, you know, doing IBC swaps back and forth. We're in this chain on that chain. And it just needs to be intuitive and simple, right? There needs to also be a mobile app. There needs to be an application on your phone where you can just get access to that, right? Like that's part of the success story from Solana with Phantom Wallet. It's just so easy to use and you can trade and buy and swap and do all these things. Well, on Solana, um, that's mostly what you're doing, trading meme coins. But I think on Cosmos, the tech offers so much more with natively um, embedded interoperability, right? Solana doesn't have that. No other ecosystem has that. Cosmos is superior on the tech side of things on so many levels. But what's missing is a unified front end, a, a front end for Cosmos. That's what we need. So I know that um, 42 is working on that. There are some other initiatives. Remember Emirates back in the days um, in 2021, this was an idea from Peng Zhang, who unfortunately was then let go from Tenement back then, um, now AIB all in bits. But um, these are all ideas that have been floating around, right? It's just because there's no core organization like the core foundation that we have on Solana, for example, the Solana Foundation, they are coordinating all these efforts. They're strategically funding and incentivizing the right people with a lot of money to not only do the marketing events and content, they're funding a lot of podcasts and those kind of things, but they're also strategically funding the development and refinement and improvement for all these applications and build also a global funnel for developers to get into Solana, right? That's what we're missing, more synergies and also a unified front end. Now, I also want to briefly cover the Kujira story because I know many of you are affected, unfortunately. Um, you probably know if you've been watching my content, my kind of story with Kujira, like uh, I think on the product side of things, it's always been great. They build this full suite DeFi ecosystem, but um, I always had kind of my issues with the community. They're, they're very toxic since the beginning. And I remember back then when they launched their chain in Cosmos after the Terra collapse, uh, they were the first ones to launch and kind of also like brought a lot of toxicity into Cosmos uh, in my personal view. But um, that also... There was a whole discussion around closed source code, which Jacob called him out on, got a lot of shit for it. And then I said, Jacob might have a point after all. Uh, then I got a lot of shit for it. And now we have this um, liquidation spiral where a lot of the foundation treasury got got uh, wrecked. And I do have a small bag of Kuji, but luckily I'm not really affected from this. Um, neither also from this recent uh, Astroport um, mint bug and also not from Terra luckily. So, and I hope you also are not affected from this, but um, yeah, this doesn't look good. Um, and I think it also revealed a lot about kind of the team and also about um, some of the code, which is closed source, but apparently there are some backdoors. We're going to get into this, but anyways, Kujira, they've shared this um, a recovery plan basically it doesn't sound like an actual bailout. There was also the conversation about the AA DAO potentially bailing them out, which I don't think would have been a good idea. But apparently the operation debt, which is around two or three million dollars, will be repaid via two individual pilot sales. One to repay the USDC debt and one to repay the USK debt, uh, which is their own native stable token. This will clear the debt on the main ghost position and also convert the BAO leverage LPs into protocol owned liquidity. Um, so this is a seven, eight step plan, but basically that's the whole thing. JP Tor, the Torchain co-founder, also has been very vocal about bailing Kujira out. And again, I think product-wise, they have done really, really great. I think also liked their branding and all these kind of things. Um, but it's really also this kind of toxic vibes that they have sent out, um, starting from the core team, to be very honest. I got a lot, a lot of weird, weird messages behind my back also from one of their founders. But yeah, this is the situation now. I would not really touch Kujira right now. Um, obviously, it's a gamble um, if they manage to pull, pull this off and uh, recover and somehow this all gets forgotten in one or two years. There might be a way that Kuji can come back stronger from this. And considering how many retailers were affected from this, I really wish that Kuji price can at least recover. And, you know, something like Terra 2.0, when they kind of, after they got exploited and this whole collapse happened, Terra 2.0 had a phase at time where there was a path for them to kind of recover and build build something new, basically rising from the ashes. I'm not sure if Kuji can pull this off too, but because I also see some of the core community members are now, you know, giving up and they're like, yeah. F this, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be here anymore. Like this has been uh, uh, breaking my trust to the team and to the project. Um, but yeah, so I, I'm not sure if bailing them out would have been the smart way for the ADAO, um, but I think this is off the table now anyways. And yesterday it also came out that apparently somehow the core Kujira team lowered the APR from 300% to 15% um, manually without any on-chain governance or anything, which means there are some sort of admin keys that enable that. And since the code is closed source, um, we don't fully understand how this how this works, um, but it's not good, not a good look, like Jacob is saying as well. Um, and yeah, many people are saying that this has been also the case previously, right? And I mean, yeah, it is what it is. I really, my point is here, I'm not trying to 
talk really, really bad about Kajira. I think this is just another reminder that whenever communities or teams are extremely confident, overconfident, and basically bashing everything around them, each and every competitor, each and everyone who is pointing out certain things, right? And I, I believe in constructive criticism, even for myself, right? If people tell me, Yossi, they're like, X, Y, Z could be improved. This and that could be improved. There's a huge difference between doing that and like just randomly shitting, misleading information and um, lying about certain things, right? But I think in that case, the Kajira community has been very, very, very vocal about, you know, we're the next big thing, F osmosis, we're going to kill them, we're the number one, we're going to overtake us, Atom and all these kind of things. And um, while being closed source, while having this kind of situation also after the Terra collapse with the stable token. Um, so I think, yeah, this is definitely another reminder, another harsh reminder, if you've been invested into Kujira, that, yeah, this is always kind of a bit of a red flag, but do with that information whatever you want. If you believe that Kujira can pull it off and can recover from this, then that's great for you. Um, I personally would not touch it at all. I also think the Cosmos Hub should not touch it and think about acquiring it, but it's just my personal opinion. Switching to positive news, finally, Greg Zuri, founder of Akash Network, announced that Llama 3.1, the most advanced AI model, was now deployed on Akash within 24 hours of its release and is available on chat.akash.network and chatapi.akash.network. There will be a tutorial and um, you can check that out. And I think Akash Network, what I love about them a lot is like, Greg and team, they have never been involved too much in this drama, right? They've been an OG Cosmos chain, but they just focus on AI, on compute, on the cloud industry, disrupting that with their chain. That's their core mission. And it's just relentlessly following that mission. And that's exactly what you want. You have haters, you have people throwing stones in your way, work yourself through it. That's what Greg and team have been doing over the years successfully, which is why rightfully they are um, they are up there. They are one of the most talked about Cosmos chains and AI and cloud compute chains out there. Um, there are some improvements that need to be made. Obviously, also inflation is relatively high now um, at, I think, 20%. Um, it's capped at 20%, but I think there's also proposals now and discussions to, to reduce that. We did a full-on breakdown of AKT tokenomics at the Cito Zone. You can check that out too. But yeah, AKT community ships, and they're also going to be this year at Cosmos like they've always been. They're going to be leading the AI track I think this is going to be one of the most productive tracks this year at Cosmos. Then we have news from Eclipse. Eclipse mainnet is now open for builders. Eclipse is basically um, using Celestia for data availability. And it's basically Solana on Ethereum, bringing the SVM Solana virtual machine onto an Ethereum L2. So this is basically combining all of these stacks together. We're very interested to see how they're going to perform how um, they can also attract builders. I think this is the most important things for those new chains is to attract builders, attract liquidity and volumes, right? So I'm gonna be excited to see how that plays out. Then we also have news from Region Network, one of the OG RWA tokenizing also carbon credits. We talked a lot about this with Gregory Landua years ago, who's also an absolute OG. The Region team has been the core team that maintained the Cosmos SDK during times of adversity. Another team that's one of those that like, they just keep building, they just keep pushing, right? And they might not have the hundreds of millions, billions in valuations, but it's just a team with a vision, right? And I respect that, I respect that. So yeah, what they've done now is a drastic step, but basically reducing the validator ecosystem from 71 to 21 in the active set. With the Exeter, we're one of them. We've been on region for nearly three years. Um, and to be honest, I think it's a good step, obviously also for validator economics and sustainability. With the Exeter, we are running a lot of validators at a loss for many, many years now. Um, and uh, I think it's important to also be sure that validators are economically sustainable, right? Yes, there are certain chains, especially when they launch and you do the maths in the first week, you're like, oh my God, they're making so much money. But the truth is that the question is, how does it look like after one year, after two years, after three years? Is this economic sustainable for validators that are running critical infrastructure that have to have monitoring systems, alert systems 24 seven, if there's an emergency, right? Which we had plenty of them over the years. This is very challenging. And I think Regen did the right move here um, in reducing the set. And we're proud of that to also remain in the set. Um, and yeah, we're gonna see where this chain is going. And also um, if they can keep pushing, I believe that this green narrative as a tokenizing carbon credits and those kind of things, I really believe that there is a time when this is going to really be have its own season, its own run, right? Because it's it's just such a no-brainer, in my opinion, right? Tokenizing carbon credits, building also this whole IoT infrastructure, this physical infrastructure around it. Um, it's not easy, but I think it will come. The time will come for that narrative to really take off. Then we have some updates from Osmosis. A lot has happened in July. And like, if you look at price movement, one thing, put it aside, but you look at what's actually going on. July recap. They shipped smart accounts. One click trading is now live. We made a quick tutorial about that. You know all, all about what that is, what that means. The asset page has improved. Now we have improved liquidity pool discovery, new charts, trading view charts, integrated, and all these kind of things. 
$35 billion in total trading volume, milestone achievement, alloyed assets, which basically means you don't have to worry about like, is this on Axelar, is it on Noble, is it on Kava, is it there, is this bridge assets. Now you have alloyed USDT, which is basically composed of a basket of underlying assets, right? Like Wormhole, Tether, Solana, Tether, uh, Picasso, um, Kava, and Axelar. Alloyed Tether USDT is just one asset that represents all of them below, right? Which decreases the complexity and um, everything for, for end users. Then you have this revenue sharing proposal, which passed for NBTC users from Nomic. Then they have joined a couple of events, fireside chats in the US, also in Brussels, they were there. Uh, they did a Bitcoin renaissance, also getting more and more aligned with the Bitcoin ecosystem. Sunny did a podcast. Um, and we also did a full on recap here on the Citizen, which is also featured here by Osmosis. So thanks for the feature. And um, yeah, I think this is important to understand. Fundamentals and development goes one way, price goes the other way. There's a clear disconnect and eventually it will reconnect, right? That's just, the chances are high for chains that have high development and progress and all these kind of things. The chances are lower that they will just die and fade into irrelevance. But that's just my personal opinion. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. And I think also Osmosis is going back to the roots and focusing on becoming the best DeFi platform made in Cosmos. I think that's a smart way instead of trying to chase 10 narratives at a time, right? I th really think that like concentrating your vision into one or two things is smarter than trying to chase 10 narratives at a time. Then we also have Stockware exploring to integrate IBC and other multi-billion dollar ecosystem. I I'm not sure if Stockware has too much developments going on. I think DYDX was deployed on Stockware or Starknet previously, but then um, they migrated and built their own Cosmos chain just natively. So I'm not sure how big the Starkware ecosystem is. I also heard that it's quite hard to deploy there as a developer, but yeah, it's just what it is. Still good to see that IBC gets more and more um, integrations. Then there's also a good post about Lava, Mainnet, Reflections, also the airdrop and distribution, market-derived FDV, um, the airdrop kind of distribution itself, which communities, the liquidity, kind of reflections about it. Um, so read through that. This is from, I think, yeah, you wrote it, um, founder of La Lava Network. Then we have this teaser announcement from Noble, 5th of August, save the date, Noble Express. I don't really know what that means. I'm trying to get information, but yeah, interesting to see that Noble is um, also just doing their own thing. Same here. They just keep building, keep shipping, on the integration, USDC integration, hundreds of millions in native assets issued. They just keep pushing, they just keep building. And I think Noble is also one that is going to be highly relevant in this bull run. StreamSwap is leveling it up. They have now launched on Injective. If you're unfamiliar, StreamSwap is basically a launchpad, um, a decentralized launchpad that is on Osmosis primarily, but now they also launched on Injective. And I think we also need more of that. We also need more token launches through StreamSwap. So I really wish that some more teams consider launching on StreamSwap, which is just the best place to launch your token. Mantra also just announced the eligibility criteria for the 50 million OM gen drop including Atom stakers to their mantra node. I'm not sure if it's only to their mantra node or, or every Atom staker. Um, I hope it's for all Atom stakers and maybe a bonus for mantra node stakers, but I'm trying to get all this detailed information um, as well. Badkit holders, Bitkit holders, Sloth holders, Mad Scientists are all considered here as well. And then obviously participants with karma points on their mantra.zone. We made tutorials about that. We keep you posted here in the CryptoCito, the Cito zone, and also on StakeCito. And um, yeah, KYC users and many more. Initia is also in testnet right now. You have to level up your journey um, if you also want to get an airdrop, right? Because I think there's also an airdrop um, as you level up your journey. And um, yeah, Initia is also very close to launch mainnet. Then we also have this challenge here from Stride X Celestia, where if you take a picture of a device running a Celestia light node, then you might win a Celestine sloth. Um, the best photo wins one. And three winners are going to get tickets for next year's Modular Summit. And lastly, I also want to share this. Zach XPT, in response to Namada, that's also very, very close to launch. And Namada did something extremely controversial, which is basically that early investors have no lockups. 100% of the supply will be unlocked at TGE with no lockups. 85% for the team, 32% for investors. He's like, how are people incentivized to continue working on the protocol? And Chris Goes, one of the co-founders of Anoma, said the system of vesting lockups are pra practiced today is a scam. It impairs the freedom of market participants, manipulates the price signal, and screws the public. Questioning the vesting orthodoxy is not a popular position, but it is mine. So that's a really, really bold move. I'm not judging it upfront, like Zach XPT indicates. I mean, this is obviously on the silver plate now for people to fight them and say, how can you do that? This is so dumb, but it is what it is. Let me know what you think about this. And I hope you learned something about the video. Stick around in crypto. We're not going to zero. Don't follow the haters. Don't follow the toxic comments and hateful comments. 
Stick around, do your research, and you shall be fine. I'll see you guys very soon. Until then, stay safe and be good.